I've deliberately en entitled it um, From Language as a Problem to Language as a Resource, so that we don't talk about language as a barrier or as a problem or as something that prevents us from doing things, but it allows us and enables us to do things. Um, and, uh, and, and I want to start with why language is important for learning and teaching, for, for mathematics teaching and learning. And, and, and that's because everything that we do in language is grounded in language, whether we assess, whether we teach, whether we think, whether we solving problems, even when we're working at the symbolic level, it is language. <coughs> um, we use language to create mathematic, mathematical knowledge and understanding. The construction of knowledge requires people to put things into whatever, and I'll go fast because I know that you have to leave and I understand that colleagues at the department have other commitments. So I'm going to go fast so that I get to my argument. All right? Um, the second reason is that learning mathematics has elements that are very similar to learning a language. When you learn mathematics, you learn ways of speaking, reading, and writing. Um, and, and so when we teach mathematics, we teach it both as a message and as a medium. At first, you teach it as a message. So the mathematics that you learn at lower levels, when you get to higher levels, you use it as a medium. When we're in grade five, we assume that the concept of number is in place. We use that concept as a medium to learn the new message. And the new message may be fractions or whatever it is. So, so it functions, mathematics itself is it, 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 similar to learning a language in that way. Um, and mathematics teaches in classrooms where learners learn in a language that's not their own, have a dual task. In, in, they've got to learn, teach both mathematics and the language in which mathematics is learned, because in, in learned and taught, because in, in, in their learning of mathematics, they're gonna need language. In their engaging with mathematical problems, they're gonna need to be fluent in particular languages. And, and I like using this example. I mean, we can talk about many different ways in which language plays itself out in mathematics. Like if I say to a learner, What's the, can you find the difference between 7 and 22? They might say to me, well, one has got two digits, the other one has got one digit, one is even, the other one is odd, one has got two numbers that are similar. All those are differences in, in, in English, but mathematically we know what that, that would mean. But, and it's many different examples that we can make. If I give a learner an expression to simplify and they decide to factorize and solve it, change it into an equation and solve it, there's a linguistic issue. Do they understand solving the equation and simplifying a, a, a trinomial that's given to them? But we can go to higher levels because some people have said, well, it doesn't mean anything. When you get to a higher level, it doesn't mean, it does mean something. Consider this mathematical sentence. You can speak English, and if I gave you that, and I say to you, give me an idea of what that means, many of us will not be able to say that. Not because we don't understand English, but because we don't understand mathematics. Even because it's presented in English, it's, it, it brings its own complexity. But if you understand mathematics, and I give you a, the same sentence in French, you understand mathematics, and I give it to you in French, you will still find difficulty. If any of you in the room can speak French, I want you to tell me the small error that I made with French, the French sentence. Tony, can you do that? <laughs> You've got to learn that mathematics to do that. Okay, so, so it's not a simple thing as, as, as if you know the language, you far, you, you'll get on with the maths. If you know the maths, you'll get on with the, with the, with the, with the language. Present your mathematical problem in French, your mathematician, it still becomes a little tricky. So language is central in that way, at higher levels, at lower levels, at any level of mathematical learning. But whilst I'm there, it's also important to pause and say, as important as language is, I don't want to reduce poor performance in, by multilingual learners solely to language. There are a multiplicity of factors that influence learner performance in multilingual classrooms. But language is one of them, and language is one of the key ones, and that's why we're here. And it's not only one of the key ones. I mean, I, I can hear Murunga talking about the importance of language in math, uh, just from decolonizing our thinking, you know, valuing, whatever. I'm not even there. I'm just talking 
it, uh, it's key in terms of learning, but it's not the only one. There are many other issues that, that influence uh, learning, but we f paying attention to this because when you look at performance, you see that learners who learn mathematics in a language that's not their own perform much lower than others. Okay? And you can bring class. You can say, well, language is also a signifier of class, maybe race, maybe whatever. Are there other things going on here? And we can go on and on. I just want to focus on language in this point in time. But to show that we are aware that this is not the only issue that influences learner performance. But at the core of our research in this area of study is, is a need to address the uneven distribution of knowledge and success in mathematics. We, we, we are saying we cannot accept that it is African learners. It is learners who learn in a language that's not their own, that's not their own, who are not doing well. And we should just say this is just what it is. And let's just get on. Okay? Uh, there, there, we, we've got to, we, that's central. That's what drives why some of us stay away, keep running, because we say it is not okay. So what do we do? Now we have a language policy. And, and you spoke very eloquently eloquently about it. It recognizes 11 official languages, very progressive. You go all over the world, many countries have got many languages. We are the only country that recognizes them as official, that more than 10 languages are official. Right, that's very, pro it encourages multilingualism as a resource. Um, uh, you know, there are provisions as to choices that can be made. The, 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 the question that's never been asked, of course, is even with all of this, I mean, I saw the, the highlights when you talk about policy, it's very important, I agree. It's very important. But what's, what's, what's interesting is actually, of course, no one has ever made that choice. Actually, the government has never had to, to call on that highlight. Actually, never. And I'll tell you why later. Okay, and, and you probably agree with me. Okay, but before I get there, we've got this 11 official languages. We also have research that supports multilingualism. It's not just policy. Because there's research that argues that multilingualism is not a disadvantage. It does not impede mathematics learning. Uh, learners' home languages are a resource. This research comes from education, from mathematics education, from language, from all over the years. It's not new. Uh, uh, however, all of, these, all of these studies, I did an analysis of research that's done in this area of study, and I realized the move. From 19, before 1962, I think Pearl and Lambert published their paper in 1962, there was this idea that multilingualism is a problem, it, 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 it hampers your thinking and so on. And after 1962, um, uh, there was a change. And research, some of the research was done here, some of it uh, with, in Canada with French and, 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 and English, some in, in, in other countries that are bilingual. And more and more, there was research that came up that said, actually, it doesn't impede learning. Actually, it supports it. Actually, it's an advantage. There's even research that says it is an advantage. OK? So talking about language as a barrier, when research, a lot of research after that time shows that it's an advantage, made, made me think. So I looked at this research and said, so if this multilingualism is an advantage, why is it that then is not working for us in this way. And I looked, I looked at these studies. What's common about these studies is the fact that all of them were framed by a conception of languages just as a tool for thinking and communication. Just that. But the problem with language is that language is not just a tool for thinking and communication. It is also political. Language is political. And that's what makes it, that's what makes it difficult. And that's, that's what makes Policy not necessarily gain traction, even if it's progressive. That's what makes research not gain traction, even if, even if it's for the advantage of learners, because language is political. It was central to the ideology of apartheid in South Africa. That's why we cannot just leave it and say, you know, what can we do? It was used to classify, segregate, and polarize South African. It still does the same. Today, it doesn't only classify us and separate and polarize us according to to, 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 to race, it does that according to class, because it's a marker of class. The better English you speak, the better, uh, how it, it signifies how affluent you are. 
People judge how smart you are based on your English. So it, it polarizes, but it emerges from where, where we come from. The deliberate underdevelopment of African languages during apartheid was a part of a larger social engineering project. The fact that African languages are not at the level where Africans was, even though they existed before Africans, it's not because African people are stupid and they're not interested in their languages. It was a bigger project and we've got to accept that. So to change it, we've got to engage. We've got to put on a bigger project, a bigger social engineering project. 